Hey guys and welcome to Petroped and welcome to the Goodwood Festival of Speed 2021. Now about a week ago I got one of those really cool phone calls from Alfa Romeo with a simple question, is your race license in date? To which I answered yes and then they said okay would you like to drive the Alfa Romeo Giulia GTA up the hill on Sunday? And obviously I said yes. Would you guys like to come along for the ride? Okay, let me walk you around my steed for the day, the Alfa Romeo GTA, based on the Giulia Quadrifoglio, one of my favorite saloon cars. We will start off with the front. Underneath the bonnet then we have the Biturbo V6, but it's had quite a bit of work done, now producing 540 horsepower. That's not just a map change either, there's internal changes to the engine to basically take the power higher up into the rev range to improve driving. The bonnet and the roof are carbon fiber, but also the front wings and the front splitter are all carbon fiber. The car has a wider track, most noticeable at the rear with those extended carbon wheel arches, 50 millimeter wider track, and is also the first car to leave the factory with center, or sorry, first four door production car to leave the factory with center lock wheels as standard and a huge set of carbon ceramic brakes, as you can see. Now, if we wander down the side, there's a lot of aero work being done on this car, and there's a bit of a giveaway as to who's done it. So a lot of the aero work has been done by the Sauber Formula One team in their wind tunnel. What we can't see is underneath the car is a flat floor which produces uh, better downforce than the standard Julia. And then you can see at the rear we've got a much more aggressive diffuser and a rather nice sounding twin exit, a Krapovich exhaust system, titanium all the way from the headers to the rear. Weight saving wise, this car is about 50 kilos lighter than the Giulia Quadrifoglio and its sibling, the GTA-M, uh, is another 50 kilos lighter than this. Now the GTA has a fairly aggressive wing. One of the standout differences between the GTA and the GTA-M is the GTA-M has an absolutely huge wing on top. This is a little bit more subtle. And then we get a nice view down the side. You can see those carbon fiber rear arches just giving a wider track. We just show you briefly on the inside Inside, swathed in Alcantara. Now, the GTA and GTAM are limited to 500 units worldwide, and that's a mix between the two. This GTA has the beautiful carbon backed seats with GTA embossed onto the headrest. The GTAM has a rear seat delete and uh, rear roll cage and four point racing harness, so quite different on the inside. Absolutely stunning, stunning thing. Now, if you want one of these, 500 units limited run, but they are quite pricey as well. So the GTA is 175,000 euros, and the GTA M is 180,000 euros, and that is before you go anywhere near an options list. But things like the carbon roof, uh, the wheels, the center lock wheels, the carbon ceramic brakes, they're standard. So it's, it's a significantly expensive car if you compare it to a standard Julia Quadrifoglio, but I think it's different gravy in terms of performance. I can't wait to take this car up the hill. Um, I'll be on hill literally within the next hour or so. It's clearly a very short run. I think to really exploit the car, you need to go onto a motor circuit, but it should be fun. So very shortly we'll be getting in the car, taking it up the hill here at Goodwood. Now then. Here's a top tip, if you ever want to draw a crowd around a car at Festival of Speed, get hold of the key, that might be the tricky bit, start it, and then in this particular example, put it into race mode. Now, I have warmed the car up before anybody comments, and then just start to just tickle the rev count. lots of people coming and taking pictures and people love you because it will be all over Instagram there you go now next thing we've got to do is do that on the hill okay let's do this <laughs> to say I am quite nervous is actually an understatement but let's do it here 
Here we go. Arctic 5 in front of me, actually. That's quite cool. Just got to be immature and, you know, give it a bit of a rev. So, if you've followed me on one of my passenger ride videos, you'll know the procedure by now. We have to drive down to the start which is always a pretty impressive convoy and a very surreal experience. I never get blasé about it. This is only the third time I've driven through the actual festival. You can do press drives on Friday without a race license. There's a chicane on the hill. But for me, this is, this is very, very special. You've got all the crowds. I used to be that side of the ropes and now I'm here and I just never, ever, never, ever take it for granted. Does sound quite good. Yes! <laughs> it's all we want, really, isn't it? <laughs> oh, and the red arrows have just flown overhead. <laughs> yes surreal moment so the red arrows have nearly finished their display I think we will be going very shortly so it's time to suit up now interestingly you you don't have to wear a race suit uh, to go up the hill today it is highly recommended and the main reason I'm wearing my balaclava is I just find my my helmet is far more comfortable when I've got a balaclava on um, but I don't, you know, the, there's, but then there's an element of having come to Goodwood for so long to be the other side of the ropes, to kind of walk through the park and have your race suit on and take part is, is so special. And that's kind of why you make an extra special effort and put your race suit on. Anyway, I'm going to put my helmet on and I think we'll be going shortly. Okay, we are good to go. So I am in race mode. I've even found some nice performance technical gauges on the dash showing me my boost torque. 600 Newton meters of torque this car has. I don't think I'm gonna be doing a great deal of talking on the way up. I need to concentrate. There might be a, a little bit less tread on the rear tires by the time I get it back. That's fine, that's what they are for. That's why we have spits. <laughs> Love it when the lady from Alpha says, yeah. the lady from Alpha, she says yes. yes. <laughs> it's nice. It's usually from Alpha, KP will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I know Christina well. Yeah. So I have an Ionic 5 in front of me. I have a Polestar behind me, but I can do this. They
Well, I screwed up the start. <laughs> I'll have to try one of them on the way back. Yeah, in the next few years, and um, that Mustang that we saw going up there has got an untamed plus mode for the track. I just had to get that in before, before we move on to Mr. Greaves, I see, piloting the uh, Alpha Julia GTA up the hill here. As if, as if a quadrifolio Julia wasn't enough. We've got the GTA and the GTA M where, where the two seats have been stripped out and it's properly track focused. But this, the, the GTA has still got four seats inside. Certainly had a lot of the Alfisti, the Alpha fans uh, drooling at the sight of these two cars. And when they go up in tandem, they look great. But actually, I really think that looks fantastic in that uh, metallic, rich, dark red. I think that's very much an Alfa Romeo colour. Yep, limited edition, lovely V6 by Turbo, 540 horsepower. Very nice indeed. I, I was saying I followed Julia from about 60 miles out in Kent down to here on, on Friday, and I thought, you must be going to the festival speed. <laughs> and he was. <laughs> Yes, it's funny how many cars. Is that bonnet? Is it me? Or is that bonnet just sitting up a little bit? Maybe not being closed quite properly. But anyhow, got to the top of the run. Now backing off as it goes under the finish line through the straw bales. It's all right. Peter Grease is a careful and steady driver. <laughs> now then, safely at the top of the hill. So let's take a wander around and see who we can see. So yeah, gutted. I just I messed up that start. I just didn't quite get it right. But anyway, a little bit of wheel slip. Wonder down here. There's some some well recognised faces. I see Mr. Charlie Cooper myself down here. I'm going to say hello to him. I didn't take long being told to get back in our cars. Quick chat with Greg Williams from uh, VMAX, which is all oh, oh, my goodness, sorry. Auto Vivendi. Uh, Tim's up here as well somewhere. Yes, let me head on back to the Alpha and head back down the hill. That was good fun. So this is the fun bit where you go back down, waving at all the crowd with <laughs> with some insane Lamborghinis in front. Oh my goodness. This does sound pretty good though. end oh here we go it's from alpha it's in one piece say a massive thank you to Alfa Romeo UK for inviting me to drive this very very special car up the hill it's one of those experiences that are they're once in a lifetime things money can't buy and it's very intimidating you know there's an awful lot of people watching there's been a couple of cars had nasty accidents and it doesn't take very much to be too confident too cocky and then everything can go awful really really quickly so i pushed on as much as i was comfortable with i'm a bit disappointed i didn't manage to work out the whole um, burnout thing it's a little bit tricky actually it's, it, it will take a little bit of time to get used to that but i hope you enjoyed it i mean how special what privileged access but if you enjoyed this one please give me a thumbs up comments below are always welcome and if you haven't done so already please subscribe to Pentraped for plenty more content to come it's because of the number of people who subscribe and all of you guys watching that i get